Hello friends, my name is Michael Soloviev. Welcome to my studio in Montreal. First of all, I want to say thank you for invitation to make this demo and to the honor to be part of such great company. I think the idea to know each other better, uh, make a demo like that, it's a brilliant idea. I am double grateful for this invitation. Thank you again. So. Uh, today I want to uh, explain you a few things uh, about my style and some technical tricks. Some of them uh, you know before, some of them maybe will be kind of new for you. Uh, first of all, this is our subject. And it's a street in Italy, in Fabriano, a small town, you know, for sure you know. We hold the uh, most bigger uh, watercolor festival on our planet. So we're going to Italy today. And this is a piece of paper, 15 by 15 inches, uh, Sanders Waterford, 300 grams, rough paper. And before I start to uh, paint something, uh, we might make a simple sketch. But uh, you see the composition on the photo, it's in the portrait position. I'm transforming it uh, to the square, just because if I have to rebuild the composition, I never just uh, copy the photo. It's the trick which helped me to create my own picture, not just following the reference precise. I don't want to uh, spend a lot of time for sketches, that's why we make it really, really simple. I like that window, so we're going to do that. I like that street sign that looks brilliant, so for sure. It will be part of our picture. Uh, I create a few lines which help me to create the perspective, but that's just a simple thing. I don't want to focus in on that, definitely. So that's enough for sketching. And the uh, trick number one. I need a time to make the soft blending for all my, our mixes, for all my colors together on the paper. And for that, I really need a lot of time. I don't want to make it like a stressful. That's why I want to prepare my paper. I put the water, but only on the back, not on the front. Because in that case, I can use a dry brush strikes easily. For that job I will use the big brush like that. By the way, it's a great quality brush if you're interested in this. So we apply the water on the back carefully because I don't want to have a water on the front. And a very important idea. After that I have to wait at least 10-15 minutes. So my water have to remove the air between fibers and in that case my paper will be ready. So we have to wait and during that time I want to introduce my tools because you know for the watercolor it's very important. The tools it's like a number one. I believe it's a number one for any kind of job. So I use a few main brushes. Uh, this is a this is a very specific brush. If you want to know more, you can go to my YouTube channel. Uh, we have a special video about all that brushes. Just a few words. Uh, this is a natural uh, uh, brushes, uh, gold. Uh, very uh, flat and tiny. So with that brush and a strong hair. It's not a usual gold. It's prepared gold. That's why it's strong, like a spring. And with this brush, very easy to use washout technique. 
what we're gonna use today a lot and I will show you how to bring the light using the washout. So we will use the two brushes like that, three and five lines. A special brush, it's a traditional calligraphy brush, just great quality. Uh, it's made special for me. With a two different hair, inside kind of Chinese wolf, outside goat again. And it's perfect combination because uh, the wolf hold the shape and the goat hold the water. So that's really, really amazing. Plus, um, I will use the mop brush. I couldn't say what that's a regular mop brush. First of all, it's natural squirrel. Second one, it's very pointy, absolutely sharp brush. And again, it's made for me. That's why it's make the, my name. It's a solo black. Um, it is brush made for dancing. And this is, by the way, it's real black wood, ebony wood. And it's balanced like this to make my brush dance. And it's extremely pointy compared to the regular mop brushes. And the last one, this is the red brush liner. Uh, best liner on the planet. So this is our tool. Um, apply the water at one time. And few words about my palette. This is my travel palette, just nine colors. Uh, that's enough uh, for almost all the painting what I'm doing. Just in the studio sometimes I use 18 colors, but the nine is enough. And all that colors you can find on that set. This set made by the Daniel Smith special for me, uh, because I'm ambassador of the company. And here you can find all that car colors plus moon glue. And about three guys here, I have to say a little bit more. This is a Queen Acridon Sienna. This is a Pyrian Violet and Indigo. That mine three colors and I'm almost eating them. That's why it's a huge pun here. I'm using them a lot and you will see that. So almost all my mixing made with that. So times to times I add the different colors inside, but that's my basic colors. The last time we put the water, we can check if uh, our paper is going to be soft. That means it's ready. Okay, that's ready. I put it on my board. After that, I have to be sure that there is no air between paper and my board. So I, I press it like this, just by hand. And another one trick, you know if I'm start to paint right now, in the, in the end, then it's going to be dry. My paper is going to be look like a waves, it's not comfortable. That's why I'm going to use the tape to fix my paper on the board. Because the front side is dry, it will be easy to fix. By the way, uh, this, it's not a uh, regular tape, it's tape made special for watercolor. My blackboard, what I'm using like a s support for my paper, this tape, all my brushes, everything you can find on my website watercoloronline.com. And that's really, really strong tape and can hold a really wet paper, but it's not strong enough to destroy your paper. So what we have, we have flat paper, which hold a lot of water on the back and between fibers. That means everything what we're going to do on top, not drying fast. The last trick, a secret trick. I use the tape two times. Also, I make another one white frame around my watercolor. That means I don't have to use the, the mat or passepartout after that because we already have a nice frame and I like that white clear paper around. So, because it's just one inch, so that's what I'm gonna do. I put it, you see, on the line of my paper like that. 
That means around my painting will be equal distance everywhere. In the end, I, I remove that and you will see how it looks like. So we're ready to start and I'm use my big brush. It's a cobalt for uh, my painting today that will be mine blue color. But uh, I will mix that with the indigo and a little bit sienna to make it kind of grayish. You see, because of the of that brush, and because the back side is wet, I can use a dry brush technique and leave some space of paper, clear paper. As I say, it's not drying, that means I can change the colors right now, everywhere. Plus, as I say, I can use washout. That means I can do that. Just make the clouds to remove the pigments. Good. I mix the sienna with a Queen Credon deep gold and I use a lot of water to keep my mix transparent. Plus, I want to use a lot of clear paper, that's why I not the water on the front. So you see, because of the dry brush, I can do the texture of the old wall. All the mix is very soft and transparent. By the way, that's another one point uh, about my my color set. All that pigments are transparent. That means it doesn't matter how much pigments I mix together. In the end, I always have a very transparent mix. And my painting never will be look like a dirt because of that. For now I'm not focusing on the shadows, that will be the next layer. 
So for now I just prepare the light part. We can spray it with a fingers a little bit to make the texture look better. You see, I still have a chance to combine all my spots together. It's not drying because of the paper on the back. That's the trick. Or you can paint slowly, no rush. And keep everything connected. And when the sky is still wet. So it's pretty comfortable. If we want to add some different colors inside, we can spray it with the pigments as well, something like that. It's like a sparking, you know, it's nice special effect. For my feeling it's real watercolor. So that's the light part. We can stop on that because after that I have to care about the shadows. And for this I have to make my front side is dry. Just don't be wrong. I don't want to make all my paper dry completely. We're just talking about the top. A little bit dry. Not much. And because we already have a light honestly on our paper, it's paper itself, all our job to add the shadows, that's what we're gonna do right now. My basic mix will be sienna and indigo together, which give me the very nice brown color. And times to times I add the different pigments inside, such as cobalt for instance, or a little bit reddish pigments. But that's my basic mix. out so I'm gonna separate the the wall and the roof just like this we can bring some lights here like that because of the rough paper uh, I can use the dry brush technique easily I switch to the little bit smaller brush three lines
vorschaut. You know, I'm doing my best to make the line of the roof like a noisy or jazzy, I can say. Because we're talking about the very old buildings. Uh, the roof never will look like a straight line, like a corners. It's always some details there, so I'm gonna use that. Plus, again, I back to the washout to keep the lines to separate the roof and the wall. And the corner as well so we have a pretty soft light because today we're talking about about the pretty fast sketch I don't want to spend a lot of time for perfect details I just want to show you the way what I'm following. You know, I can say I'm trying to make the jazz and watercolor. I believe it's the best explanation about the style and techniques what I'm doing. I'm trying to make some noise which will be look like a, some subject, but I'm not trying to paint the subject itself. That's the idea. And I'm gonna create the big shadow right now. For that I switch to the big brush and at one time. I use the dry brush again to make it look better. I will make some shiny effect inside the, the shadow just using the washout. And we go into that. You know, for my feeling, uh, this is just. It's not a lot of buildings here. It's a two, maybe three, but for me it's just one object. It's one wall of the street. And I put this wall in the shadow, that side of the street, all of them. I know it's a lot of details here, but uh, it's not interesting for me. For me, this is my focus point. What I'm trying to say, the shadow is the shadow, and it doesn't matter what inside that shadow. If we're focusing on light, if we're focusing on the shadow, I keep the light like a clear white paper and do nothing. So it depends where is your focus point. I add some different colors inside, a little bit yellowish here, a little bit darker there. Not bad.
and we connect everything together. Again, if we want to do that more interesting, we can spray it a little bit to make the nice watercolor special effect, just like this. And continue to make some details inside. And again, I'm going to use the washout. I switch to the little bit more tiny brush. Just because of the few vertical lines we create the, something look like a windows and we don't have to focus on that anymore after that. And again if we want to separate the buildings and the shed on the ground we can use the washout as well. So for now I switch to my calligraphy brush to create more smaller details and tiny lines. That makes what I'm used for buildings uh, on the background a little bit lighter to, to show the perspective better. It's a tonal perspective. So I make it just lighter and less details. Idea is if our subconscious understand what that's the buildings, we don't have to do more. We don't have to do precise, we are not a copy machine, right? Because I never use the white if I want to care about the white lines I have to prepare that in advance.
and before uh, we continue to paint uh, I want to tell you what first of all everything was possible if we're talking about that simple sketch made by just flat brushes uh, I show you how to use the more brush in the dancing way to create a nice jazzy details so first of all uh, I hold the brush like this not like that like this and I'm gonna them all my brushes to dance like that so less control it's look like a, you paint and someone push you a little bit and your brush make more spontaneous moving but before to do that I have to make it dry a little bit not completely So let's continue dance. Adjust. You know, if uh, I will be in my studio alone without you, I'm definitely turn on the good jazz music for that. So this part I will make kind of precise because I like the design of that stuff so I will make a lot of lines like that I like how it's look like you see the brush is pretty sharp so it's easy to do After I finish this, I back for for dancing again. Remember, idea to do a uh, a lot of spontaneous touching, very alive with all the freedom, what I can do. Now I have to uh, back to the precise part of the painting. Uh, I want to create the, my sign. I like how it looks like, so it makes sense to keep it there. Good. Some shadows around.
and just in the end I switch to the liner. This is another one dancing brush. So I want to create the tiny lines. First of all, uh, we have a wires on the street. And you know, it's like a noise of the city, jazz of the city, big part of the cityscapes, even if we're talking about the small village like that. So the wires is a great stuff. As I say, that's the noise of the city. So we're done. Uh, we create a pretty simple sketch of the Italian small street and uh, we used my main tool uh, and you saw my technique and the more important the idea how I create the project. One more thing, uh, I just removed the tape. By the way, it's much better to do uh, than your paper dry completely, but I just want to show you the white lines on the perimeter. So with that white border, the watercolor look much better. It's a pleasure to be with you and it's a pleasure to be part of such great company. Thank you for that. And if you have any questions or want to communicate, I'm always available for you and it's a pleasure for me. Thank you, stay healthy and who knows, maybe we see each other in person at once. Bye bye.